Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bear's Off Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. And yeah, look at the temperature today. Uh, weather girl lied yesterday. Uh, she said that it was only going to get into the low 90s today, and then would get to triple digits tomorrow, starting tomorrow, and then cool down again for the weekend. So we'll see how far she screwed up. But anyway, the winds are gone. That's a good thing. Uh, Last night, they came up uh, after sunset like they normally do. Calm during the day, wind at night, so makes it comfortable sleeping with a couple of windows open, get some nice cool breeze blowing through. And uh, then uh, first thing in the morning, um, the, the winds die down again and it goes back to the same routine. So let's see if that happens again today. Right now, four miles per hour coming out of the southwest. So let's get outside and get some things done here. All right. Oh, so first thing as I'm walking out the door, uh, you remember I showed you that 50 caliber shell casing I found right here. And I turned it so you could see the back end of it. Well, one of the viewers, subscribers, KDSJ, no, sorry, KD5J, a small K, small D, number five, small J, says that that stands for Remington Arms 1943. That's a World War II casing. Solid brass. Interesting. I know when I was in, they were starting to make these out of steel because brass was too expensive. So anyway, anybody know uh, what era this nail is from? It's a hand forged square nail and it looks to be around six inches long. And it's got a chisel type point on it. So let me know if you know what that is. All right, so today I was in the garden early, and uh, I got all the fertilizing done. I got my tomato plants all tied back up again because the the winds had knocked everything over in there. So I got everything really soaked down good after I fertilized everything, and we'll go into that on another day. But right now, I'll come in and show you. I put a new fan below the bridge rectifier and uh, there's no wind right now so there's no power coming in at all but everything's staying cool my breaker is holding now that's what happened was the um, the rectifier got really hot so when it got hot it was sending a signal to the breaker that there was extra heat in the wire and of course the breaker did what it was supposed to. It's an 80 amp breaker and the input was 84 amps. So it, uh, it the breaker popped to protect the, the circuit so that, so that wires wouldn't burn and catch fire. So it did exactly what it was supposed to do. So I'm not going to upgrade the wiring on that or anything like that because it's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. If it exceeds 80 amps it should kick off. There's no no reason in the world that I need more than 80 amps coming into my battery bank. I just can't see it. <laughs> Alright, so batteries are at uh, full and floating. 13.6 right now. So no wind, so there's no uh, wind power generating coming in or anything like that. Ah, yesterday I missed Tool Time Tuesdays, and the only thing I can tell you about two time, Tool Time Tuesdays is one of the best tools to have for off-grid homestead. Actually, there's a couple of them, a couple of different types, but what you need is a propane torch. 
and an oxyacetylene torch. Those two things come in really handy, and you say, well, I don't know how to use them. Why would I get one? Trust me, you can get online, and you can learn very quickly how to use those. But if for nothing else, a propane torch is great for just heating things up. Like yesterday, I was doing my neighbor's um, water filter, and all of the nipples were a uh, long time rusted into. They were all galvanized. They were all rusted together. So the best way to get those apart is you heat the outer fitting. So if it's an elbow, heat the elbow. And then you can grab a hold of the, um, the threaded nipple that's in it with a pipe wrench or whatever. A apply steady pressure. Don't jerk on it. I mean, a lot of people make that mistake when they're working with um, pipe fittings. You do not jerk on the fitting. Uh, you do not jerk on the pipe wrench. Okay, so like say this. If I wanted to get that out of there, I could heat the brass section right there and then clamp that in the vise and grab this pipe with a pipe wrench and apply steady pressure. That's the secret. You apply steady pressure and it will eventually, you feel it just give and smoothly go out. If you jerk on it and the inside of that pipe is rotted out, you're going to snap the pipe off. So you don't ever want to do that. So, that being said, remember, you definitely do want to have a propane torch. Now... I use this type, which is really handy because that screws onto a little one pound tank. And then this has a igniter built right into it. So you can click, click, and you got a, a flame coming out, a nice blue flame. And you can heat up your fitting, whatever you want to heat up, and set that torch down, and it goes out. And then you can work with your pipe wrench. Uh, propane torch top of the line tool all right so another thing is you remember my switch for my belt sander has what is all broken and blown apart so i did order one from harbor freight tools and uh it finally got here because Fed up was the one they chose to deliver. I forgot to tell them not to, but uh, I did write that down right next to my computer from now on. So I make sure I tell everybody, please don't use FedEx. I call them fed up because I'm fed up with them. Anyway, they received this on the uh, last day of last month and they never d did deliver. It kept saying the delivery date, this day, this day, this day, and they never did deliver. And then all of a sudden I got a note from them saying they're turning it over to the USPS or the United States Postal Service to deliver it to me. So as soon as they did, it took three days for me to get it, which was originally what Harbor Freight said it would take me to get it. So lesson learned, don't use fed up. They're, they're just terrible. They couldn't deliver a one-word speech if it was pronounced for them. Oh, my God. Now, don't get me started. <laughs> All right. So, very quickly, let's move around and go inside of here. And I'll show you the other torch, if I can, because it's buried right now. But there's oxyacetylene, and I got this cart at uh, Harbor Freight to carry all of that stuff. This thing is great for welding. You use solid steel rod or iron rod like this for welding. And then they have these flux-coated ones that are brass inside, so you can do brazing. And they have aluminum rods, so you can do aluminum welding. Really, really a good tool to have. And these tanks, 
because you don't use them all the time, you're not like a welding shop or an automobile shop or something like that, you only use them occasionally like I do now, these tanks are probably from uh, the mid-1990s was the last time I had these things filled. Or They don't fill them while you wait. They exchange them with a uh, new tank. So these are probably way out of date. But uh, when I take them in, they'll say, oh, yeah, your tanks are out of date. But they inspect them there, and they have tumblers that they can tumble them and check them and all of that. And they give you a new set of tanks. So these things are probably still better than half full. So it'll be the rest of my lifetime with these unless I really get into doing some welding and cutting. Now, a couple of things is you're going to need a set of gauges, which you can buy at Harbor Freight. And then you get the torches. Now, see, this torch has a, a knurled nut right there where it can be taken apart. And these are your gas valve and air valve. Okay, so... The gas is on the red, the, the oxygen is on the green. And you can get a nice blue flame out of this for welding and brazing. But you also want to, and you can buy the whole kit at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive. You also want, oh, I don't see it back here. Oh, it's, it's back there in the tray. Um, there's a cutting torch. And it's got a, a squeeze lever on it. So once you get the thing set for the proper flame and you heat up the metal a little bit, then you squeeze that and it gives you extra air pressure to blow the molten metal out of the cut you're making through, through steel or whatever you're cutting, pipes or whatever. So good items to have, really good items. So that covers my Tool Time Tuesday commitment to you guys sorry i didn't do that yesterday but uh i had other things going on and by the time i was ready to shoot the video it was too late because of course my phone still isn't working even though um they told me you know you just need a new phone your phone is defective it's not our towers well it cost me 269 dollars for the new phone and i still don't have good service so they will be getting a call when I have some time to sit down for another couple of hours online. And I will not t put up with their crap of redoing all the same tests all over again. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell them, look, put me up to the engineering fourth level people who know what the hell they're talking about. Because I've done all of this stuff six times. I'm not going to do it anymore. If you can't help me get to the top of the line uh, technicians, then I'll just go over the top of everybody's head. And that's what I do. I don't put up with that baloney. Of course, it didn't work with FedEx. I contacted the CEO of FedEx by email and told him what was going on in the Bloomington, California um, FedEx uh, depot or whatever you want to call it. With my all my deliveries, not a single one delivery ever got delivered on time by FedEx. I told them what was going on, and I expected to hear from them right away. Never, never heard back from the CEO of FedEx like he could care less. So that tells you what kind of company they're running. Um, I contacted Verizon CEO um, twice in my lifetime, and within 20 minutes, I got a phone call back. Uh, and I sent an email and then 20 minutes my phone rang and it was her office so that shows you that they are a good company and stand behind their customers all right everybody that's all I have don't forget thumbs ups down there don't forget to subscribe yes we did go over 6500 I think it was like 6510 this morning so thank you all for subscribing and let's keep it going G-Bear signing off